So tonight we're going to talk um, to four girls, and I think it's great um, actually to have girls on the panel because um, there's a lot of girl things that us guys don't think about, so we're going to talk about some of that too. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is ask um, each of you to introduce yourself, um, and we'll go down the line from here and um, tell us your name, where you live, how old you are, and then we'll have some more specific questions. My name is Eleanor, I'm 17, and I'm from New York. Um, my name is Maddie, um, I'm 13, and I'm from Long Island. My name is Chloe, I'm 13, and I live in Fort Lauderdale. Hi, I'm Adele, I'm 15, and I live in Lauderdale by the sea. And I heard that two of you are, have been friends since you were little. Well, it, we've been friends since we were little, and then we've we also friends. know each other. Yeah. yeah. So that's why you're in the middle. <laughs> okay. Um, I also want to mention that um, the teen panel is sponsored by Family Equality Council. And as you're thinking about it, the way I think about it, and hopefully this is okay to say, but I think of us as the organization that really helps you until you have a child. And then um, once you have children, Family Equality Council really has the focus on um, LGBT families because there's a whole different set of issues once you've actually gone through, the, through all the steps to have a child. Um, they're a national nonprofit whose mission is to advance legal um, and lived equality for LGBTQ families and for those who wish to form them through building community, changing hearts and minds, and driving policy change. Um, the Outspoken Generation Program <clears throat> strives to empower those with one or more LGBTQ parents to speak out about their families. So that's, that's uh, literally what this is. And for decades, people with LGBTQ parents have been outspoken advocates for justice Today, people with LGBTQ parents are telling their own truths, helping to, to dispel hateful myths, and um, you, can, you can visit familyequality.org um, if you're interested in getting more information, if you remember that after everything that we've um, bombarded you with. So um, we'll start with the first question, and that is, um, do you remember when your parents first explained to you how your family was formed, um, and what do you remember about that? that first conversation and any ongoing conversations? Um, so for me personally, it was never one specific conversation. It was never like my parents sat me down and were like, okay, we're going to tell you everything right now. And like, this is it. It was mostly like over the years as I was growing up, it was like, as I, was at, as I would like naturally ask questions or my brother would naturally ask questions, um, they would answer it in like a way that was appropriate that answered our question and like basically Ever since then, like, ever since we were curious to learn more, we did. And eventually, like, they did explain more and more as we grew older. So, like, when we were, like, I don't know, when we were just starting to, like, ask questions, like, obviously we were very young, and they didn't, like, explain all the technical terms of, like, IVF and everything. But, like, as I grew up, I just had, like, many ongoing conversations, like, um, how surrogacy worked and why they chose to do it the way they did and how they did it, especially. Um, so, for us, it was just, like, an ongoing conversation. Maddie? Yes, yeah, so I pretty much had like, the same thing. My dad taught me, my parents taught me about it when I was like pretty young. So as I went on, I just asked questions and they answered. And it wasn't like really a big deal because it was like all I knew. So it just, it wasn't really, yeah, it wasn't like a sit down conversation telling me everything at once. Chloe? Yeah, pretty much the same thing. Like. It's just because I've always, it's always been like that. Like, I've always, like, known, because I always live with my parents, like, it's never been, like, a weird thing or, like, not, like, everyone. So it wasn't just a sit-down conversation. I already, I would always, like, you know, I don't know, was aware of what was happening. Adele? Uh, yeah, I've known since I was little. So... I started explaining it to other people when I was two, so that means I must have known about it when I was a baby. <laughs> like, people go and ask a two-year-old, oh, hey, how are you born? And it's like, I'm two. So I would say, egg, sperm, petri dish, and that's how I would explain it. <laughs> like, that's what I knew. And so it was like a simple explanation to me. And so as I got older, I knew like more technical stuff about it. But I like basically I knew all the science behind it when I was two. So, yeah. It's like clear. And, and I'll tell you, with our twins, um, I went to the school when they when they moved from the toddler room to the to the pre-primary room. I went to the school and I and I talked to the teachers and I said, "Here's the deal: 
Sawyer and Olivia have two dads. That's the whole story. And if, if, if anybody else asks anything else, you send them to me. And I, I'm happy to, to talk to them with whatever level that they want. And um, we live in Texas. Um, and, and I actually literally saw a, a, a sigh of relief as the teachers were like, okay, we, we, can, we can deal with this. Now, last Wednesday night, we were sitting at dinner, and that's, that's the same way we talk to our kids. We were sitting at dinner, and um, Olivia says, I know I have two dads, but why don't I have a mom? We're like, whoa, okay. <clears throat> and so now we've arranged a, a meeting to, uh, to go. They, they know that they were in Miss Jessica's tummy, and so I mean, they've met her a couple of times, but now that they're aware, um, we're going to go have a meeting um, sometime in the next couple of weeks so that we can advance that. Did you have, have you met your, um, your surrogates? Um, I haven't, like, since I was born, and I don't, I don't really have, like, any special connection to her. I know, like, other kids, like, have, like, like get really close to their surrogate, but um, I personally haven't, and I know that if I wanted to, or if she really wanted to, that we could arrange a meeting. It's just, like, not something that is especially important to me um, at this point. But my egg donor, however, like, is my aunt, so, like, I do have a close relationship with her. She's, like, but she's just my aunt to me. She's not, like, a stepmom or, like, a half-mom or anything like that. It's just, like, a regular, she's, like, not more special than any of my other aunts. But I do, like, frequently see her as a family member. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have relationships with either of my, my egg donor or my surrogate. Um, my surrogate, I don't know. Um, I haven't really had the urge to, like, really want to, but... You know, the, the egg donor, I mean, she, I don't really, she has a family of her own, and I, I don't think she particularly wants to, so I'm, I don't really, it's not a big deal for me because I have two parents that love me, and I don't really need, like, she's not a part of my life, and it's not really going to make a difference if she is, so. Yeah, um, I don't have... Well, I know who my um, surrogate is because my parents know her, like, they're Facebook friends, but, like, I, like, don't, I haven't, like, met her, like, we haven't had, like, a sit down, like, hi, and, like, I don't really want to, like, I have no desire, and I also don't have any relationship with my egg donor, but, like, that's okay for me. Um, I don't have any relationship with my egg donor, but I do know my surrogate, and so I've met, like, her entire family. We see them, like, once a year because they live in Canada where I was born. And so I have a relationship with her and her family where it's like friends. And so every year on my birthday, I thank her for all she's done for my family and stuff like that. But it's not like she's more. It's like a good family friend who's done something nice for us. And so like I'm close with her kids and stuff. But there's like, it's just we're friends and that's about it. And for my egg donor, like I guess I want to meet her just to like thank her for what she's done. But it's not like, oh, I would want to see her as like a mother. It's like, no, I want to thank her. And then also in a medical way, I just like, if I ever have any problems, it would be nice to know all that stuff. But at the same time, it's like most of our medical records are given to us, so it's okay. And like, I'm okay without knowing her. That makes sense. Um, thank you. So um, we'll start with Chloe on this one. Um, how do you describe your family to others? And, and, and how has that changed over time? Okay. How do I describe my family? Okay. So, well, obviously when I was a little kid, it wasn't as like much of like an explaining as now like when I was a kid I'd be like I have two dads like what don't you understand um, <laughs> but um <laughs> now that I'm older and I get the like more and more questions now I understand that like it's not just a like what don't you understand it's a oh, like, I should probably explain it because not everyone has two dads and not everyone has, like, the same situation as me. So now I explain it to it as someone who is <coughs> wanted to do something nice for someone else gave her egg and it was put into um, my surrogate who is, like, a kind of a family friend and now I have two amazing parents that love me so much and I wouldn't have it any other way and that's pretty much, unless there's any other questions, that's pretty much how I go about it. Adele. Um, I go out about it pretty similarly, um, but I've like explained the scientific stuff and then I usually like talk to kids about it and so if I ever get like overwhelmed, like once I had like 20 kids asking me, oh how are you born, how don't you have a mom, I was just like, go ask my friend and talk to her because she knows the entire story and it's like, I don't want to talk about this right now. 
It's like, I'm, I always knew that people like wouldn't understand it and like would be confused. So, and then I've, over the years, I've gotten like weirder and weirder questions. Like there was this out kid in my school and they're like, oh, were your parents in a secret gay club with this kid? And it's like, no, <laughs> there's not such a thing. So it's like, there are just like weirder and weirder questions you'll get sometimes just because you're older. And like some of them will be jokes, but some of them will be dead serious. So you just have to like learn how to explain it. And then you have to be able to laugh about it, some of it. Because like some of it is like very intrusive and sometimes it's rude. But just being able to laugh at it makes it much better and easier. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Um, I usually, like when I explain that I have two dads, it's like, that I usually explain first that they're married. It's not like I have a stepdad on one side and something else. Um, so that's usually the first question that I just knock out first. Um, and then I usually explain like how surrogacy works, like that there's a surrogate and an egg donor and um, one of my dads is a sperm donor and like all of that and I explain like just in very simple terms like IVF and stuff. And then like usually once they ask more questions, like I'll explain it to them. But like usually I keep it at that, like, cause it's usually just like a, oh, how are you born? Not like a, oh, I want a whole scientific like explanation behind it but um, yeah it's usually very simple and like very like short and to the point um, so um, in my town I started telling people pretty early so it's not like recently I've had to explain it to anyone but when I went about explaining it I pretty much just said yeah I was someone donated their eggs and then someone else carried me and that was it. Like, it's not really a big deal to anyone. And we, I, I live in um, a very like, educated area, so a lot of people don't really care about, I mean, they care, but it's not like a big deal or it makes me, it doesn't make me like different from anyone else. So, yeah. Can I add something? Yeah. yeah. Also, another thing that I like to explain is like the lack of um, in my case, a genetic connection between me and my surrogate, because usually that's like another question that I'd get. So, um, a lot of people like their first like misconception is that like if the person like gave birth to you, like you have to be related. But that, that's another thing that I like to explain. Oh. So, oh, sorry, I just want to say something else. So, um, and people sometimes will be like, we well, used to, not anymore. They'd be like, uh, where's your mom? And I'd be like, I don't have a mom. And they'd be like. Oh, and then I have to explain the whole story, and it takes a while. And <laughs> <laughs> no, just because it happens, it happens a lot. So then, yeah, like the same thing Adele said. Like I was like, go ask her, because um, yeah, I have friends like that too. <laughs> and, and so, as you guys start to think about this, um, from the moment that you actually out yourselves as that you're as you're, you're going to have kids complete strangers will feel like they can ask you about your personal business and your bodily fluids. Um, and so it's, it's, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, who would have ever thought that their daughters are going to have to explain sperm to, to strangers or friends? Or, or probably, did you ever have to explain it to your friend's parents? Yeah. yeah. I've or gotten teachers. Questions. And teachers. Coaches. So and that kind of goes into the next, into the next question. Um, and we'll start with Maddie. Um, do you feel comfortable telling like teachers and coaches um, about how your family was formed? Do, do, do they ask, or do you, do, you, do you need to tell them? Um, well, people obviously like, assume that I have a mother, but I don't, I don't really say anything. I, I'll just like, go along with it, because really, there's no really need for it. But um, yeah, I don't have a problem telling anyone about it, because it's not, it's not that big of a deal. Like, like, teachers understand. and. I don't know. It's just it's not really a big deal. Like I, I'll tell anyone if they ask, because if like people see my parents, then they'll ask. Maybe the next day, like at parent teacher conferences, my teachers will, like my parents usually tell them at the beginning, so they don't really need to ask me. So yeah. Eleanor. Um. Yeah. It's not really ever been an, a problem for me. Um. It's it, it can get awkward if like. It's, a, it's like it's that type of person who like makes it really awkward. But I've had no issues like telling my coach or anything because um, like usually at parent teacher conferences like they'll my parents well, I'm usually not there but my parents will probably explain it. I don't know. You should ask them. But um, <laughs> but when, when they see like me with my parents or like when they say like oh so who's your mom and I'll be like wait I don't have a mom and then so usually I have to explain it like that. So I won't like 
come into their class the first day of school and be like, hi, I have two dads. Like, I was born through surrogacy. But, like, usually, yeah. eventually, it does come you up. You don't have a t-shirt that says that? No. <laughs> should get one, though. Yeah. And Adele. Um, so I've had occasionally, like, especially health teachers, like, ask me, are you comfortable sharing? Because I'm just so used to it. Like, I've explained it to, like, random people. So I just explain it to them, and they ask if I'm comfortable, and I usually am. And so, like, I'll explain it to the class or to them, and it's, like, easy, and they haven't really had a problem with it. And some teachers, I just haven't had to explain it. I don't know if my parents have explained it. It's just, like, magically not something I really have to deal with. So it's, like... I'll sometimes get, are you adopted, or I've had to do like family trees for a project. So you just have to figure out like a way to work with the teacher just to say, this is my family, and I work in a little bit of a different way than maybe some normal families. So just, yeah. Chloe? I've really, well, I've really not had to talk about it much with like my teachers because it's never been like an issue or something that's come up because like what Maddie said, like they just assume that I have like a mom and like if they're like addressing the class, I'm not going to be like, oh, well, no, I don't have a mom. Like that's not, I'm not going to do that because it's just not needed. Um, and so I've never had like a, like had to tell a teacher or a coach or anything like that really. But like if it came up, I wouldn't be like against it or anything. And, and so for the, the dads, because everybody's got at least one, and most have two dads here. For the dads, do you uh, actively tell the teachers as you, as you meet a new teacher? Do you need to make a, a, a point of it, or it just kind of happens? In the earlier years, because you know, it's already 15, 16 years ago, um, we tell them up front, and sometimes even give them the Family Equality Council information. <laughs> So, you know, mostly the teachers were, were fine with it, but we had a few teachers that, you know, didn't know how to deal with, like, Mother's Day. And so, you know, we just had to have a conversation. She could do something for her grandmother or she could do something for one of her fathers. So it, it was helpful to have conversations. And it, it, was Mother's Day tough at school for any of you? Um, so in my school, like, we used, I think, of, I don't remember what grade it was. It was probably, like, early elementary school or something. We did have, like, this one day where we all sat down and made cards for Mother's Day. And I think I did talk to my teachers. I'm not, ex I'm sh not sure exactly how it went down, but um, eventually they did change it to Family Day. Um, I think I, my parents and I, like, talked to our teachers and the principal, and, like, we did change it to Family Day. So right. instead of, so you could address to any family member. But I think I either, I don't know if I did it for my dad or my grandma, but... It, it wasn't like a huge deal for me at the moment. Like I was like, well, I mean, I don't have a dad, and they knew that, so like, it wasn't like particularly troubling. But we did like eventually go to the school, and we um, in the same school like we also um, talked to the administration about changes in like forms, especially because a lot of them said like father mother instead of parent one parent two or parent slash guardian one et cetera. So um, we did do things like that. So um, yeah, so. In my, in my elementary school, sorry, in my elementary school, we did it like first through fifth grade, I don't know. Um, and we just, I either made for Mother's Day, like for my aunt or my grandma, and it wasn't really an issue. My teacher would just be like, okay, just do it for whoever you want. And I'd be like, okay. And then sometimes on like the cards, it would say like, dear mom. So I just have to like cross it out. Um, <laughs> so you know, but it wasn't, it wasn't a, an issue. And I remember, like, specifically, like, in first grade, like, we would all make these, like, cards, and it was, like, this big, like, we spent our entire day on it, and, like, everyone was so excited because you got to draw cards the entire day. And I literally just went up to my teacher, and I was like, I'm making one for my dad. Okay, great. And then I just went and I did it, being a sassy first grader. <laughs> um, and I, get, I guess my teacher was kind of flustered. She was just like, um, okay. Like, I did <laughs> I don't know, but it's ever like it's really never been an issue, which has been great. Like I could assume for some people it might have been like unfortunately, but never for me. Yeah, I've had to do like things for my grandma. I've had a teacher who was like, "No, you have to like do it for a woman." I'm like, "But I don't have a mom." And so like then I eventually had to do it for like my grandmother and stuff, which was like okay, but it was just bizarre to me. It was like, "If I don't have a mom, why are you forcing me to like try to conform to that. And then I've had forms which are like, oh, where did your mother go to school instead of where did your guardian go to school? And was asking me like, 
I have pages and pages of how to answer about my mother. And so I like went up to the teacher and the teacher felt bad. And this is like legal documents that have been created after gay marriage was passed, after gay people could adopt children. And it's just bizarre to me that they're asking me these things. When, so we, we went up and so my teacher like talked to the principal about it. And so it just kind of created a discussion. So I like feel like sometimes occasionally I'll have to like talk to a teacher and just let them know that this is a form that doesn't work for me and it might not work for others if you have a single parent raising you or whatever. So, yeah. Can I just ask? And so, yeah, <coughs> on, on like, if it says like, if there's like a permission slip or something to fill out about your parents just for information for school, um, and it says mother, I, if it says mother, I won't really go through all that thing explaining. I'll just cross it out and I'll, I'll like, other dad. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. So um, have, have any of you experienced negative reactions? And if you did, uh, if there's any that stand out to you, how did you handle it? Um, no, I haven't really had any negative reactions. Most of them are be like, oh, cool. Or like some, some, some of my friends actually got really, really excited. They were very, very like impressed almost by like my story. And they, they really liked the idea of like me having two dads and they, they, re they get, they kind of like really think my dad's are really cute and they get like really excited every time they meet them, especially like my camp friends and stuff. Yeah, so um, I've never really had any negative reactions, um, thankfully, but um, no, it's, yeah, it's not something I've had to handle, but in, in the future, if it were to happen, like I would try and like just calm them down and like explain to them, like try and figure out what their problem is and like work it out and just have a discussion about it. Um, so personally, I haven't had any negative reactions. Um, like people, I'll be like, "Oh, I wish I had two dads," and blah blah blah. But then, people in my school, like the guys in my school, they're they're like some of them are just like jerks. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah. So they'll, they'll they'll make jokes like, "Oh, you're so gay," or they'll just use "gay" in their in their were in their like language. I, I don't know how to like explain it, but then it they kind of like use it as a negative thing, and so like I'd be like, no, <laughs> stop. And like my friend also, she she doesn't have two dads or anything, but she also she gets like she gets offended by it because she thinks it's really rude, and I think it's rude also because it shouldn't be a negative thing, and it shouldn't be like used as a joke. Like it's. Like, it's not a bad thing to be gay. It's just who you are, and it shouldn't be tossed around like that. Because, I mean, they don't know that they're, they're insulting your parents. Yeah. I mean, it's... And, it's, and people, like, say, I'd be right, I was standing right there, and most people know that I have two dads. I don't really think they understand, like, that that could be offensive. So, like, don't say that around me. So. Yeah, okay. So, um... For negative reactions as like that comes, um, I go to like a very conservative school. Like there's not like there's not a lot of people with gay parents at my school like at all. Like there's only one other person that I know, but like you know that's common. And um, so <laughs> um, I've gotten like some like eye rolls like every once in a while, just like an okay. And then a lot of the times they just I get like tons and tons and tons of questions because they literally have not been educated whatsoever by their parents. They don't know absolutely anything about um, surrogates or egg donors or even like basic, like basic basic stuff, like the difference between gay and a lesbian. And then I have to go through and explain that to them, but that's just because, you know, their parents haven't explained it to them, which like, you know, it's do whatever you want. And, but, and another thing, like what Maddie said was, um, I do get, well, in my school, like, gay is used as an insult, like, over and over again. Like, I, like, on the daily, it's been used, it's, it's used in my school. And I've gotten to a point where it doesn't bother me anymore, but especially when I was in elementary school, I got to a part where I was like, uh, no, don't say that. Like, I would go and, like, stand up for, like, the person who was, like, being told to the person who was there. Like, now it's, like, now, like, no one cares because it's just used as a derogatory term, which it shouldn't be used as because as... Maddie said it's not something to be ashamed of. It's like nothing like that. And but for some reason now people are using it as like a negative term. And like 
Another thing, which I don't, I don't think anyone else has touched on, is um, I get like the, okay, your parents are gay, are you gay? Because like, that's like a direct thing. And I'm like, no, not me. And um, usually they're like, okay. <laughs> because they just like, for some reason they don't believe me, but you know. I get the <laughs> well, like <laughs> they. That's like one of the most asked questions. Like right after I say my parents are gay, they go, "Okay, are you gay?" Like before even like, because now they understand it. Like more and more people are educated about like what gay parents are, which is amazing. But like obviously, like the first question is, "Are you gay?" Oh, okay, you're not gay. Okay, like okay, you can tell me that. But you know, whatever. I don't get bothered by that anymore. Um, so once, I think it was like third or fourth grade, I told someone that my parents were gay and I'm Jewish in like the same sentence. And so immediately... <laughs> 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 They were like, go to hell, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm also a vegetarian, and they were like, go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess all three things, like, I guess I shouldn't really be here. But, <laughs> like, I've been, like, told, like, pe people have called each other, like, faggots and stuff like that, and I've, like, discussed to people, and so some people just don't understand that. And so I've explained it to them, but usually as soon as I say my parents are gay, they're like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. And like they'll start like bowing down to me, which I don't understand, but thank you. <laughs> and then one of my old schools, I was immediately like, I was told, everyone was like, oh, she's a lesbian because she talks about her two dads a lot. And I was like, I don't. So, I mean, that's something you have to like deal with. It's like, I'm not gay just because my parents are gay. I identify as straight, and that's okay. And so it's like, I'm not trying to be offensive saying I'm not gay, it's just what I am. And like, <laughs> so it's like, it would be nice if people understood that, but you just have to like, let your kids know that it's okay that you're not gay. It's just, some people might assume things, and just be what you want to be, and let people, and sometimes you just have to let people think what they want to think because you can't really deal with that. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I want to add something too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So it hasn't really happened this year, but a lot last year, people threw around the term faggot a lot. And, I mean, I, it, it, was, it was rude. And I, I don't think it should, like, as a same thing by people saying gay a lot. Like, it, it's so, like, not even if it has anything to do that could be thought of as, like, feminine. But it's just like if they do, like it's the dumbest things. Like if you drop a pencil, they'll be like, "Oh, you're a fag," and I'd be like, "Do you even know what that means? Like, stop! It, that's not relevant. That's like that's so irrelevant." And so I, I don't know. It just yeah, it's stupid. Can I answer? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, but um, besides that. <laughs> uh, just like a really, really, really quick story, like five seconds. So, um, <laughs> I have like what like part of my environment. Like right now, we're talking about like negative, like negative um, reactions from people. But now in my life, I get so many positive reactions, which I think is also really important because I have such an amazing atmosphere. Like. Like, it's so accepting, and like, I'm so accepting because my parents have um, raised me as accepting. Like, my two best friends are identify, as, one of them's trans and identifies as gay, and the other one is a demi girl, which people don't know what it is. It's half non binary, half girl, and is queer, which is, I know, it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> even crazier, they all live on my block. And, um, <laughs> they, need to, they need to check the water or something. <laughs> uh, but that is so great. And I even got to like one day where they're like, it's okay, you're straight. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which I just thought was the best thing ever. And honestly, like, it makes no difference like who my friends are like, but it's just so great that I live in such like an accepting, like, like how such an accepting like neighborhood such I live like such an accepting life and like I felt like that was important to say. So so dads, how proud are you right now? <laughs> pretty, pretty proud.
Yeah, yeah I mean, it, yeah. but I'm thinking about because my kids are only f not even five yet. I'm thinking about when when they're when they're that at this age. Um, so here's the question that wasn't on the list, um, and it's going to be kind of towards towards the dad since we have a panel that's all girls. That the most common question that Sean and I get, mostly from relatives, is what are you going to do when you would normally tell them to go talk to their mom when the girl stuff starts to happen? And um, I, so I gave James um, some extra warning that, I was gonna, that, that we were going to talk about that because it, I mean, it's a real thing if you end up with girls. Yeah. Um, hi, everybody. So that's my daughter, Maddie. And I think that the most important thing is to have a great support system of women around you. So Maddie has two aunts and a grandmother, and I have a lot of female friends. And if there's, um, aside from looking it up on YouTube, um, <laughs> and, and, I, and I will say, Maddie pretty much comes up with the answers on her own, but if there is something that I feel is important for her to know an extra layer of, I will usually consult either my sister or a close girlfriend. And um, that's why I just say how important it is to have that female support system. And I don't know if, if did any of you have any comments about was it was it did you miss that you didn't have a, a, a mom to talk to when girl stuff started happening? Um so I think I mean I think yeah, it's it could be a little hard not having that female support system around, but you know, it's it's not like the end of the world. Like it's not a big deal. Um yeah. So I have a lot of my dad's friends, um, I'm close with also, so I could just ask them questions like when I first got my period, um, like my my family, my dad's friend, she came over and she taught me everything, and so that it was it was fine. It, like, so what's your dad know about a bra, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that that's the, that's one of the negative things that. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, not everyone's always available, so my dad will have to take me bra shopping. <laughs> and that's not the best thing, so I'll be like, wait over there. <laughs> not, I can do it. And yeah, so it's okay. But he doesn't like because they're very expensive, so he doesn't he doesn't understand. But <laughs> you know. Um, can I add something? Chloe, yeah, Chloe. Okay. Um, well, okay. So my parents, I literally. Could, um, I talk to them about everything and anything and so when I first got my period I really was just like okay and like also I have um, one of my block people like my best friends she um, she's a year older than me so she basically came over and was like okay 101 this is what you need to know but even without her I mean Google is a great resource I mean you can Google anything now because the, the internet's always right <laughs> And even another thing is, I have two amazing aunts who live like less than a minute away from here. One of them's here with me today. You're great. And um, I could also talk to them about anything. So having the female support system is great. Having Google is great. I mean, I don't really think it's much of an issue like whatsoever, like especially for me. So for me, it was kind of interesting. I found out about periods when I was eight, which was like good though, because I had a friend who got her period when she was eight, which is really early but it was just like nice to know about the stuff and be prepared and so all of my aunts live far away but then I have all my friends moms who I'm really close with and so it's really good because I have that support system I have like when my grandma comes we'll go bra shopping when my grandma's not here my parents and I go bra shopping and so sometimes they'll pick up like weird stuff in bra stores like it's like, I, I, we don't need this. It's okay. <laughs> and then, so when I first got my period, I shouted down the hall, I got my period. And so, like, and they were like, okay, what do we need? Okay. And so, like, we already had everything because they were already prepared, which is good. They <laughs> were like, okay, we got the pads, we got everything. You ready? Okay, perfect. So I was like, good, because as long as you're prepared for it and you're ready, and so my parents, they'll know. Like they're like, okay, Adele, bring like pads. Like they're they make sure that I'm okay and that I'm like prepared for anything to happen. And so, and then they're like, oh yeah, our friend's a gynecologist. You can like ask them anything. So maybe <laughs> don't do that. But <laughs> that was a little weird conversation. But for the most part, it's okay. And 
you have to let your kid under like make sure they understand that it's okay. Like if you ever have questions, you can ask these people. And for your female friends, just let them know they don't need a mom. I had this woman and my best friend's mom, and she's like, if you ever need a mom, I'll be your mom. And it's like, okay. <laughs> so that wasn't great, but it was like the thought. So you have to let like your female friends know they don't need a mom. It's okay. They have two dads, and like. Let them know that it's okay. You have the support system you need. You have you have friends who are girls who can help you whenever you need. And it's all okay. Yeah. yeah, so my experience was similar to hers. Like my parents were kind of like they kind of they didn't really sit me down, like explain it to me like one on one, but they did give me like some resources. They gave me like a book and like they also I think my all of my like relatives live pretty far away, but my aunt was over one time, I think it was for like Thanksgiving or something, I'm not really sure. But like we did go like before I got my period and everything. Like they they like gave me the book and they like had me talk to her and like we went and got stuff like before anything happened. And then once it happened, like I was totally prepared. Like I did do some researching on my own, obviously. And but the thing is, like another really important thing for me was like I could talk to them about it. So like it wasn't like they were like, okay, you go do your stuff. Like we're over here. Like don't talk to us like, about it. Just like girl stuff but no, they were there very like they were there for me and although I didn't like need to ask them a lot of stuff but uh, it was nice knowing that like I could if I wanted to and like every time I need to like go get stuff from the pharmacy like I can go like I'm not some of my friends think it's think it's like really weird especially like going bra shopping or like regular clothes shopping with like my dads because they're like they always either go they usually go with their moms so whenever I'm like oh I'm going like shopping for anything basically like I recently went shopping for a prom dress with my dad <clears throat> and a lot of my friends were like oh your dad like actually uh, the dress I ended up choosing was one that my dad picked out um, <laughs> it just happened to be that way and then a lot of them were like kind of confused and like surprised but like like dads can take you shopping too dads can do all of the things that like people think only moms should or can do so I think um, not only like having that open relationship is like also like being accepting that like you don't need a mom to like go through puberty, puberty as a girl. And you don't need like a mom to go like um, pad shopping with you or bra shopping for that matter. Although like I did have to do a little bit of researching on my own for that part. But also um, I do have a best friend who li who's my neighbor and her mom also like if I needed anything I could always talk to her um, or her mom. So having that female support is there. But like I don't always use it like I usually, I would go to my parents first and they would be like they're knowledgeable. They also probably did their own research. Like, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure how they learned all of it. Um, <laughs> but they do. They 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 are knowledgeable on their own. So, um, like, I would first and foremost go to my parents, which I think is a lot of a, th a thing that a lot of people would like think is too awkward. But I genuinely think that like it's very important that like when you guys are parents, like you educate yourself first. Because if you're girl, if like you have a daughter and she gets her period and you guys are like just as freaked out as she is, like it's kind of gonna be a little. <laughs> it's gonna be a little rough. But. Um, <laughs> But like, as long as you guys like talk about it beforehand, you're all prepared. Like everything will be just fine. <laughs> Did you want to add something, yes. Maddie? Yeah. Okay. So, and also, for for the fa I, sorry, um, for the fa for if you go shopping with your daughter, if you have a daughter, it's it's yeah, it's it's totally it's totally cool. But personally, when I go shopping with my dad, it's just it's just it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> We always, we always end up getting into an argument, and he's like, "Get that off! It's ugly." And I'll be like, "I really like it." And it's it just, it's, I don't, I don't like it. I prefer to go with someone else. But you know, <laughs> but I don't, I don't think that's a gay dad thing. I think that's a parent thing. <laughs> yeah, but you know, he's yeah. But um, and also, um, when I when I got my period for the first time, I was at my other dad's house, not his house, my other one. And so I called him. I was like hey, I got my period. And so he was like, ah, that's so cool. And no, that's, that's not really how it happened. I don't remember. But I remember I was like freaked out um, before, but I, it, wasn't, it wasn't like bad. And, um, and yeah, like, like she said how she got books. I remember my grandma always used to bring me so many books. And I was like, ew, I don't want that. <laughs> so yeah, I never read them, but. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, a lot of my friends had gotten their period before me, so they told, and I like asked questions because I thought it was gonna be like so scary, and you know I didn't even know it happened, so. 
So I'm going to ask one more question of you, and then we're going to see if, if anybody else has questions in the audience. And if, if they don't, we, I've got some other ones. But um, is there any advice that you would like to give to me with, a, with five-year-old <laughs> twins or to, to the, all this? See how happy they all look um, and excited and everybody's smiling? Is, is there any advice? And um, we'll start with Adele. Is there any advice that you'd like to give to the, the guys that are considering having uh, children through, su through surrogacy? I think be open, be like prepared. Every child's different, so there's that. But just, and like and even in the bad situations, be able to make a light of it and be able to have fun, like, and just make fun of it. Because my parents and I have had some like weird scenarios. As soon as I was born, people asked her, where did you get her, China? And so my parents would say, oh no, we got her from the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> so just be able to make light of like the bad situations and all that stuff. And that's like just my suggestion. And you'll all probably be great parents anyway, so. Yeah. I will, and we'll just, um, Chloe. Okay, so my advice would be, beside, like you have to be prepared. You have to know what you're getting into. <laughs> Especially if you have a girl, because we're a lot. <laughs> but, um. <laughs> You have to, you, besides being like, like, be able to make fun of like all the situations that you get in, like, your chat, like, you have to make sure like, you have like a great environment, like a great accepting environment, because I know like my house is like my safe space for me, and like, it's just the best. Like, it's great to have where you know it's always going to be accepting, and no matter what, like, it, everything's going to be fine there. And like, even like with my friends and stuff, they will all go to my house because it's kind of like a safe, it's like a good environment for like us. And when, it's, when it comes to being accepting to everyone, like that's really important. And besides educating yourself and all that, um, when it, what was I about to say? Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, I'm blanking. <gasps> oh no. We, uh, we can come back. Maddie. We'll, we'll come, if, if you think about it. Um, I'm, oh. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that you should just do, do your research. Like, my dad has this little book that he's had, like, since I was born. It has, like, all these little quotes. It's like, I, I don't know. But just, yeah, okay, that, that. You said, say it again. It's called Father, Father to Daughter. It's called Father to Daughter. Right mm -hmm. Yeah, and he just, like, has it next to his bed. It's, like, a little, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I just think you should learn, like, like think about what you're getting into because it could be, it could be bumpy, but it's 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 great. So, um, yeah, I just and don't. I mean, my dad, like, I hear my dad, like, when when I'm like with him and we'll, I'll be, I'll like be a brat. Um, he'll like be like, oh, she's a teenager, and I'll be like. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, but I think it's, it's just a good experience, and you should have kids, because <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool. I do remember. You do remember? I do remember. Right. Um, I was going to say, before I blanked, um, like, you have to make sure your kid is ready for controversy, because now it's, like, amazing that it's becoming less and less, like, controversial. Like, more people are educated, more people know about it, but still you have to make sure that they know by, especially, like, by the time that they, are like, start going into school, they're going to get questions, and you have to be able to, they have to be able to know where they come from, how to explain it to their friends, because it could be quite awkward if they're, like, where are you from, and you're, like, I don't know. <laughs> like, it would just, it would be just an awkward situation, so you have to know, like, you have to teach your kids, like, where they're from, because I feel like that's important. Um, yeah, I mean, I have a couple pieces of advice. Like, the first one is, like, just be open with your kids. Like, don't hide anything from them. Don't, of course, don't lie to them, like, about how they came to the world. And it's like, um, like, I don't think you'll have to, like, for, like, sit them down and, like, explain to them, like, anything, because they will ask you. Like, they'll get curious on their own, I think, um, before, like, you would, before you get to the point where they're going to school and they won't know where they're from. They, they'll ask you before that. And um, so first, first and foremost, be open. And then another thing is just, like, um, in general, it's like your kids will be very grateful that they're in this world. Like 
I'm, I'm so, so grateful that my parents went through surrogacy, like, especially even like 17 years ago. Like, it was much harder back then. And like, a lot less people did it. So, um, and I think nowadays it's like a lot more open and accepting. And although not everyone knows what surrogacy is, not everyone you'll meet on the street is gonna be like, the most excited about it, but I think like in general, like people are a lot more open to it now, especially like um, with the internet and stuff. So people have like at least like they've seen they know what gay people are and they know that gay people now are like starting to have children. And then so like especially when your kids are like starting to grow, which will be in a couple of years from now or even more or less, depending <laughs> on your stage on how far you are. But I think like in general, everything will just will just. It'll be fine. Like you guys don't have to worry so much because I know a lot of you guys are like worried about um, uh, how other people react and if they'll like be bullied or something. But I really don't think that it's like um, something that you guys should um, worry so much about. Like, but also then again, like you can choose to surround yourself like in certain communities and certain people. Like I know my parents. Like we live in New York City, like kind of for a reason. Like. We don't live in like a rural, like um, very conservative state for a, a reason, but um, so I think like it's first of all like this community you surround yourself with will be very, um, it'll be, it'll help with the support and like um, how how people like respond to your story, but also in general I don't think anyone's going to be outright hostile to you if like to your kids, especially in schools. Nowadays, yeah. Do you have trouble explaining to people that your dad runs an organization called Men Having Babies? <laughs> I mean, it helps. It ha like the name is pretty self-explanatory. Um, <laughs> like it's it, it, it's very it's very straight to the point. So I think like when they ask like, oh, so what does your dad do? It's like, well, one's um, one runs a nursing home and the other one runs an organization called Men Having Babies. And they're like, oh, so what's that? And so like it it does start a conversation, but um, it's not like. It's not like name something like super like obscure and they're like, it, it does start a conversation. But I think that's nice though because it's nice to explain to them. It's like a good conversation starter and it's also like a good way to spread awareness and educate people. So at least in my, in my experience, I think, I, I think yeah, it's cool. Uh, that one of the things that Sean and I decided as, as you know, once we started going out with, with, with two men with two babies and carriers, it's like there's, there's no more hiding at all. Um, but it, it's amazing how many people would walk up and say, so did you give the moms the day off? And you know, sometimes we'd say, I don't, we, we never met them. Um, <laughs> and it, I kind of have a little bit of a, a sarcastic, I, 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 I get told not to do that. So uh, I'd like to turn it, and how, much, how long do you want me to go? Um, we're, uh, we're good. If we can, does anyone have any questions that they want to ask? Uh, do you, th I know you have a brother, do you think that your brother had any kind of different experience growing up from uh, his peers? He, he asked if, um, if Eleanor's brother had any different kind of experience growing up from his peers. Yeah, I have a twin brother. Um, so I know that, like, in general, our experience has been pretty similar, especially because we went to the same school growing up. But I know he had, like, one maybe, like, um, I'm not sure the details of it, but he had like one negative reaction, but he handled it really well and like he, he's not like traumatized by it by any means, but um, I think we had different experiences growing up just because we're like, he's, he's a guy and I'm a girl, but like I don't think it's because that we have two dads that we had different experiences. I think it was like generally pretty smooth for both of us, if that answers your question. Yeah. Growing up, did any of you ever experience someone that you wanted to be friends with, but their parents wouldn't allow it because you had two dads? So growing up, did any of you have experience where there was somebody you wanted to be friends with, but their parents wouldn't allow it because they have two dads? Um, I personally haven't. No. I haven't. Um, I haven't had any like really bad experiences, but, par but parents just being kind of like off. Like, just being like, oh, you have, like, two dads. Like, they would just not be, like, because, again, like, I go to a conservative school. Like, like the majority here are Republicans, and they make it very clear. Um, <laughs> and especially the parents are more strong-minded. So um, I haven't had any, like, bad experiences, but, like, just kind of, like, cringy, like, kind of bad. Like, not, like, traumatizing. Um, I had a friend in sixth grade, and I wasn't really allowed to go to her house and stuff, 
And part of that reason seemed to be that my parents were gay. Like she just wasn't quite comfortable with our friendship because my parents are gay. But that was like one in a million. And so you have to like be aware that not every parent's gonna be okay with it. But as time moves forward, it's less and less likely. Did, dads, did you ever have parents say anything to you along those lines? And, and I think that um, in our area, when people hear that we're, um, or have heard, because it's been 13 years now, um, they're actually uh, engaged and they want to know more. And I think that um, this is something, hey, we've got, a, we've got the gay family, or the, you know, the dad and daughter living down the street, and it's looked at as a, as a positive. Like we really were courageous and we took it to um, you know, the suburbs. And uh, people don't look at us as a, um, um, it, as a negative, but as these are courageous men who wanted to have a child, and they did it. So we're looked at as um, in, the, in the positive. And, and our experience actually in Texas, um, they don't mind that we're the gays next door because we're fixing up the neighborhood. Of, uh, and, and the fact that we have kids actually makes us seem normal because they, they can deal with us that, that we're actually a family. They hate that we're Democrats. Um, <laughs> so we don't put a sign up and we don't fly a gay flag because we also live in the suburbs. But generally, we're just another family. Um, yeah, we, we, we have neighbors who are very Christian conservative who were not happy we moved into the neighborhood, didn't talk to us. When Adele was born, all of a sudden they were friendly, they brought a gift over, they wanted to meet her, it kind of <laughs> uh, that, that's a, That was actually my experience with my mother-in-law. She, she, I, I, I made a joke earlier, but she didn't really accept us, she tolerated us, and then once the kids were here, suddenly we're just like, we're just like all of Sean's siblings. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure like at a, like when I couldn't speak for myself, like when I was like really young, like in kindergarten or something, like obviously they probably spoke for me, but I, I, there was never like a clear cut moment like, okay, you're off by yourself now. But um, I'm sure they did take some measures to like protect me. I'm not like, they weren't like super obvious or like super like restrictive um, from my perspective. But definitely nowadays, like I'm much more in control of like who I tell because I guess like as I got older, they, get, they got less involved with my school, but it's not been like a very overbearing, like protective sort of thing. It's been like more just like a precautionary thing, like for when I couldn't, like when I, when I couldn't like speak to any of the, like those teachers that, um, when I was like, basically when I was really young, like they would do it. But like, as I got older, like I kind of just took over. It was a natural thing. Um, so I don't really think my parents ever really sheltered me. I mean, they, if they were asked the question, they would explain it. But if I was asked the question, I wouldn't really ever have a problem with answering. And I would just say, like, yeah, I have two dads. And I would explain it. But if I was with my parents and I was asked, it wouldn't be like, oh, like, I'll answer for you. It, it didn't really make a difference. Like, I wasn't really sheltered. So. Um, I wasn't really sheltered. I wasn't sheltered. I mean, obviously, I don't know what they talked to my teachers about when I wasn't there. But um, like now, I'm pretty much left to my own, like who I tell. But now it's like because I've been at my own school, like my certain. I go to Pinecrest, and at that school, I've been there for five years, and it's just like a no like everyone knows my parents are gay. Like just as like I know like you're Jewish, like I know that, like people know that my parents are gay. Like it's like the same thing now because I, which I think is really great. Um, <laughs> you're so, you're, you're, you're so trendy. So trendy. <laughs> yeah. And, um, <laughs> and they never really sheltered me from like the real wor world, which I think was really, really good because if they made it seem like everyone, like, when I was a little kid, they made sure, like, I, like, especially, like, once I started going to school and, like, getting, like, asked more questions, I knew, like, not every family was, like, created the same way that our family was created. And, like, 
And now I always learn about like what's happening, especially in the LGBTQ community. Well, because my parents, like they run websites, which um, Gay Ad Network and Proud Parenting, which again comes up at school, and they're like, they're like, they run Gay Ad Network, and like they're like, well, yeah, and then, <laughs> but. Um, when it comes to that, they didn't shelter me from the world. They, I knew that there was always hatred in this world. I was just glad that I didn't have to deal with any. And I think that's important that you don't like completely shield your like kids or potential kids from like the world because it's important that they know that there might be controversy, even though hopefully they don't go through any. I was explained basically as soon as since I was little, like this isn't normal. Like the Todd Parr Brooks are great because they're like each family's different in their own way and then there's Tangle Makes Three explaining like how two men can like have a baby in certain ways and so that was wonderful and then but my parents also had explained to me that this isn't not everyone sees it's okay so I knew since I was little that this wasn't normal my parents and I travel a lot so sometimes when we travel and go to certain hotels or certain places I'm told don't directly say oh like you don't always mention that I like these are your dads or like don't make us like don't we might not always hold hands with you, like both of us at the same time, because then people might think we're gay and they might want to harm us. So it's not something that's bad, it's just some, it could be potentially dangerous at times. So I've known this since I was little, so I just had to like face it and be like, and wish it was different, but not always, it isn't always. So, so, so this is just a really personal question. Um, we don't generally talk about uh, our kids, our, our children, um, one of us is the biological father of both of them, and it drives people crazy because they want to know which one, wh which one um, we're, the kids are related to. And we, we've chosen not to say anything because people, in their curiosity, will say, which one's your real dad? And you know, we're both their, their fathers. Do, do, you, do you find that people want to know which, which dad you're related to? Do, do they ask you? Oh, yeah. So, especially like at airports, like that's like something that you need to know. So, but no, when like, it's like, oh, who's your real dad? Like they're both my real dad. This one's like, one of them's my biological dad. So, and it actually, used, people used to think the opposite because I used to look like one more than the other. But like, <laughs> it's like, no, the one who looks a little less like me, that's my biological father. But it's not like I'm closer to anyone or it's not like, oh, I feel like different towards one. It's just, this one's my biological one, so I might like look like him. I might have certain traits, but like my morals, my personality, I'm like greatly a mix between them, and then like some different things. So yeah. It, it, any of the rest of you? Do you, do you, um, do you get that question? Um, I don't. I don't get the question because I think it's pretty obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Because like one of my that one like one that's here. <laughs> um, I people say, oh my god, you look so much like your dad. And the other one, he's like this little small guy, and he, I'm like the same. You know, he's he's really short and like nothing. I don't look at all like him. So I, yeah, it's pretty obvious to people. Though, so I don't get the question. Yeah. Eleanor. Um, I mean the question is kind of like. Since I'm biologically technically related to both of my parents, because like my one dad donated the sperm, and then the sister of my other dad donated the egg, so I'm, bi I'm biologically like related to both of my dads. Like I do, however, like depending on which family reunion I'm at, I'll get like, oh, you look so much like your dad, and then at the at the other side of the family, like, oh, you look so much like your dad. Like so, I mean, <laughs> they won't act like they won't like. I mean, I guess if they would. I, I don't know. They, like, they, they don't really ask me who's my, like, my real dad, but they do, like, they do ask me like, if my aunt is like, my real mom, which, is, which the answer to, is no. Um, so like, I, I don't know. The question, it's kind of like, different, though. They ask for me, like, like I've been asked like, a multitude of like, that question, just in like, different variations. And I'll usually just be like, well, one is my biological father, and one of them is um, just not, but like, so, well, I mean, I don't really know how to say it. Like, I'm like kind of like, I'm half adopted from like that, and like, they think that's that cool, that just that I'm half adopted, so I don't feel like I'm half adopted, but like, <laughs> technically, I guess I am. And, um, but I do get the, oh, okay, so he's your biological father, and I go, no, 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 no. That one's my biological father. But, uh, 
biological father, but like once they get to know me, they can tell because I have the same mood swings as one of my fathers. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, no offense, no offense. So, so now, now um, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no offense, but... Um, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, but it's never been like a problem either. Like, but I have gotten okay. So where's your mom? And I'm like, I don't have a mom. But like, and then I get like, but you have to have a mom. And I go, yes, but I don't know her. And she goes, and they go, well, that's a problem. And I go, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's never been a problem, which is great. Yeah, it's funny. People swear that that they can tell that that our son is biologically related to me, and that our daughter is biologically related to Sean, because um, that, that that's and I'm sure that it's going to switch, like you said that that. Eventually, they're going to say, "I can tell that she looks like you, and he looks like he looks like him." And that's just the most awesome thing, because we just go, hmm. <laughs> so, ladies, thank you very much. Um. <laughs>